Hi, it's The Wire. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It is June 23rd, 2024. I've taken a side in the Tyson Fury, or at least a betting play, in the Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk rematch. Let's talk about it. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I've jumped in the water. I don't feel good about it. But I need to make an odds play here because I don't believe these odds are going to last. I've taken Tyson Fury to win the fight at a plus 154. Now understand, the current odds give Fury less than a 40% chance of winning the fight. I consider the bet to be high risk in part because Fury had no answers, in my opinion, for Alexander Usyk's straight left. Right? He had no answers for it. Also, this is a dangerous fight because both guys landed more than 40% of their power shots. In other words, the shots that mattered the most were landing with regularity. Right? There wasn't as much defense in that first fight as you thought. Now that I've picked a side, just in terms of betting strategy and layering things on, I'm now in the world of prop bets. Right? Hedging with, let's say, an over-under. Maybe even trying to juice the over-under by buying a round. Let's talk about it. Understand, the 12th round for me of Usyk's first fight against Anthony Joshua told me that Usyk could knock out Joshua. That Usyk had patiently deconstructed Joshua to the point where, on demand, in the second half of that 12th round of the first fight, Usyk felt comfortable enough to step in the pocket and riddle him. Joshua was lucky to survive that round. When the bell rang, look at Joshua's face. He could not believe the hell he had just been through in that round. But then we got to the rematch. And Usyk, who I thought was just going to come out and put the exclamation point on their rivalry, Right, was just going to come out and let the world know, look, I'm not afraid of this guy's punching power. I figured out this guy's tendencies. He's hesitant to throw the left hook. He doesn't have my hand speed. I'm just going to step in and rough him up. Right, Usyk, a deconstructionist who solved Tony Bellew, then went in for the kill, finished him in the middle rounds took his foot off the gas in the Joshua rematch. He was content just getting the win. I didn't think he pushed himself. I don't think he went for the knockout. Against the fighter, I think he knew he could get the knockout against. I'm hoping he has the same attitude here. In other words, I'm hoping to be able to hedge with the over because I'm hoping even if Usyk thinks he saw Fury, I'm hoping Usyk comes in thinking more about safety than risk and lets this fight linger like he let the Anthony Joshua fight linger. Keep in mind, I'm getting much better, right? I'm getting better than a plus 150. I'm getting much better than even money on the Fury side of the play. I can give back some on the over. Right? Depending on the odds, I can try to buy rounds. Now, Fury has given an interview. Let's talk about more recent news. Fury has given an interview where he claims that Usyk won no more 
than four rounds in their first fight. Let me just say, I understand fighters need to sell tickets, right? Everyone wants to sound tough. Everyone wants to sound like they were robbed when the scorecards were close. But here, I don't like the lack of awareness, right? This fight is a far cry, and I mean a far cry, from the first Fury Wilder fight, where a Fury could say, gee, how many rounds did this guy really win? How could they call this a draw? Understand here, you actually have judges who saw different fights. And some of the judges thought different things. I've been here online, I've been reading comments to earlier videos. You know, the post-fight video I did on this. Many of you, and I thank you, left comments. And there's a feeling out there among a sizable group of you that the scorecards were too close, that Usyk clearly won this fight, and that Usyk jumped out the gate fast. Now let's look at the actual scorecards. Let's name the judges. Let's talk about what they saw. Now the first four rounds of the fight. Now in the post-fight video, I talked about how the plane had left the airport. On my scorecard, Fury's up and he's well on his way, in my opinion, to winning the fight. He solved Usyk. Then, of course, he slows down. He does not have Usyk's stamina. Let me point out that, in my opinion, that's a structural problem. He will never be able to match Usyk's stamina. In my opinion, Tyson Fury's winning the fight. And then, of course, we get the ninth round. And then, of course, we get the tenth round. Fury's image is punctured. Usyk storms back in the fight, takes the title. Well, let's look at the scorecards here. There are three judges. Manuel Oliver Palermo. Excuse me. Palermo. I know everyone criticizes me for mispronouncing names. I openly admit that in researching fights, I'll rely on articles and writings more than listening to commentary on the fights, right? Craig Metcalf is the second judge. The third judge is Mike Fitzgerald. Now on, rather than mispronounce his last name again, I'll just call him Manuel. On Manuel's card, first four rounds of the fight, first four, he has Usyk winning three of them. Right? There's a group of you out there who feel the same way about this. He has Usyk winning the first round. All three judges have Usyk winning the first round. He has Usyk winning the third round. He has Usyk winning the fourth round. Right? Understand on Craig Metcalf's card, Metcalf has Usyk winning the first round, has Fury winning the second round, as Usyk winning the third round, he has Fury winning the fourth round. He has it 2-2. Mike Fitzgerald's card, and again, these guys saw different fights. Has Usyk winning the first two rounds. He has Fury winning the third and fourth round. Here's what I want people to focus on here because there's a learning curve in boxing, right? You're fighting an opponent you haven't been in the ring with before. You're figuring out his tendencies. Which one of these two guys solve the other first? Once familiarity set in, and the answer is clear here. Manuel, who has given Usyk 
three of the first four rounds gives the fifth round to Fury gives the sixth round to Fury gives the seventh round to Fury Craig Metcalf who's given Usyk two of the first four rounds gives the fifth round to Fury gives the sixth round to Fury gives the seventh round to Fury Mike Fitzgerald who gave Usyk the first two rounds of the fight his first impression was that Usyk was on top then of course he gives the third and fourth round to Fury folks he gives the fifth round to Fury the sixth round to Fury the seventh round to Fury all three judges all three of them give the fifth sixth and seventh rounds to Fury all of them folks the plane left the airport understand Mike Fitzgerald gives Fury five rounds in a row the third round through the seventh round so then we get to the eighth round here's how it landed eighth round all three judges give the eighth round to Alexander Usyk we get the infamous ninth round folks that's 10-8 across the board we get to the tenth round all three judges give that round to Usyk we get to the 11th round all three judges gave that round to Usyk why is the fight close given that all of the judges give Usyk at least two of the first four rounds given that Usyk gets a 10-8 round in the ninth given that Usyk wins the round before the ninth given that Usyk wins the round after the ninth and the round after that it's because all three judges give the 12th round to Tyson Fury so the cards are 115 112 that's Manuel's card 114 Fury 113 Usyk that's Craig Metcalf's card and significantly the card of Mike Fitzgerald the judge who gave Usyk excuse me gave Fury the third fourth fifth sixth and seventh rounds his card is 114 113 for Usyk so Usyk dominates the second half of the fight Importantly, we get to the 12th round and Usyk takes his foot off the gas. If Usyk thinks he has the edge on you, he takes his foot off the gas a little bit. He's prioritizing safety over risk. So the question here is, where do we start in this fight? Do we start in round eight? where Usyk wins the round, then comes out in round nine, 10 eights across the board, then wins round 10, then wins round 11 on each judge's scorecards. Is that where we start the rematch? Or do we start the rematch someplace else in the fifth round where Tyson Fury solves the puzzle? And then of course, gives us the sixth round where he wins on all the judges scorecards and the seventh round where he wins on all the judges scorecards well as I said earlier from this seat this is just one man's opinion of course right what I want people to realize is that while Fury cannot change the stamina gap he at least now knows about the stamina gap. In other words, if he takes off 
in the round five, round six, round seven part of the fight. If he builds a lead, now he understands that he needs a second win to be able to compete with Alexander Usyk. Now he understands that Usyk is going to be power shot heavy, left hand heavy. Let me say this too. While I don't believe Fury can change his stamina, I believe he can change his punch resistance. When a fighter's in his mid-30s and he has a problem taking the other guy's power shots, isn't that what we have here? What he can do is make sure he's not weight-drained. Wasn't Fury weight-drained for the first fight? I want Fury having extra meals. I don't need to see a boxer come in looking like Kenny Norton or Anthony Joshua. I'm from the Larry Holmes era, where Holmes came in, he wasn't going to win a bodybuilding contest, but you understood he was the baddest heavyweight on the planet for years. For years. Right? I, I have no problem with Fury coming in with some flap. That's who he is. It's not the looks that pay the bills. This is boxing. It's the skills that pay the bills. I want him able to take Usyk's power shots better since Usyk's landing them at a better than 40% clip. Both of these guys are. So what I'm hoping here you know, the casino's giving me better than a plus 150. All right, it's an odds play, right? I wouldn't take the bet if it were even money, right? It's an odds play. I'm getting a little bit extra juice there. All right, great. What I want is for Fury to be aware. So when Usyk makes a run, when Usyk tries to separate himself from Fury in round eight or round nine, I want Fury to be ready to take the shots. Why? Selfishness. I want to be able to take the over. Right now I'll concede. Fury's chin is an open question. He was dropped by Francis and Ngannou recently right it's an open question there is a coordination gap that's the biggest problem here for fury right Usyk is the better athlete fury's accustomed to fighting clunky guys where he's the better athlete he does not have that advantage against this southpaw right so fury who tried to rest during the fight. You might recall he has his back leaned up on the ropes. And as Usyk comes toward him, he starts motioning and stuff like that. The point is, his back was up against the ropes. He understood he could not stay in the middle of the ring with this guy. He simply could not. So he's going to have problems. The question is, when does he have them? I'm hoping it's in the last third of the fight. I haven't seen an over-under on this fight. What I'm hoping is that the over-under is not 11 and a half rounds or 10 and a half rounds or even nine and a half rounds. Right? I'm hoping the over-under is something like nine rounds. I'm hoping the number nine sticks in people's heads because, simply put, that's the round of the year. Right? If it's higher than that, okay, I might have to buy the ninth round. The fighters are going to have familiarity. Usyk knows his punch hurts. Tyson Fury. 
Fury's going to have to have that extra meal. He's going to have to have carbohydrates. Fortunately, this is the heavyweight division. He can have that extra meal. Not worry about blowing the way in. Right? But Fury's going to have to feed himself better. Make this less about optics and more about punch resistance. Let me uh, also point out too that the copy box number surprised me a little bit. I saw the fight. My impression was Usyk was head hunting. That was my impression. To my utter amazement, the CompuBox numbers show that Usyk, who is a great fighter, landed 70 body shots on Tyson Fury. One of the reasons Tyson Fury could not handle, could not compete with Usyk's stamina is because Usyk took away his body. Fury, by contrast, landed 46 body shots, 24 less than Usyk did. Let me also say too, another stat you need to be aware of, the power punch gap. We've talked about a coordination gap. Understand Fury lands 95 power shots. According to CompuBox, Usyk lands 122. So what you have is Usyk loading up on power shots. Importantly, Usyk lands, believe it or not, 46.9% of his power shots. So if you're a fighter, excuse me, if you're a better, who saw the first fight, saw the body shots, sees the high percentage of power shots that are landing. By the way, Fury against Usyk, who is somewhat defensively blessed believe it or not, landed 45% of his power punches, 45.2%. So big punches were landing. Fury believes that due to politics, he needs a knockout in the second fight to win it. He might go for the knockout. That might accelerate the fight endangering my hopes that it makes it to the last third of the fight. There's substantial risk here. As I said earlier, I don't feel good about the bet. But Tyson Fury at a plus 154, I can't resist. Right? I still believe that Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight of his generation. Right? He was in the cockpit, flying the plane, winning round after round when we get to the eighth round. Right? There is a moment in this fight where Tyson Fury had taken over. The question is whether he can make the adjustments so that Usyk, who's going to land more than 40% of his power shots. Let me point out that it's very hard once a pattern is established in a first fight when that many power punches were landed to suddenly be able to stop the guy from landing the shots. Right, Tyson Fury had 12 rounds to figure out how to stop Usyk from landing the shots if you look at the actual CompuBox numbers, they're a little bit scary because you're going to see that Usyk, even in the last round, a round that all three judges gave Tyson Fury, Usyk lands 18 punches to Fury's 10. Right? Usyk's landing throughout this fight. That's not going to change. Right, so Tyson Fury needs to find a way to get in the groove he got in, in the 5th, 6th, 7th round, 
right? He needs to get back in that groove. Then when the avalanche comes, he needs to find a way to either land more power shots himself, show that he's the big man. He needs to definitely improve his clinching, show that the clinching can throw the little man off his game. And he also needs to be able to take the punches. He did not, did not, in that ninth round, understand he then loses the 10th and the 12th rounds. So I have Fury at a plus 154. I'm hoping to hedge it with an overbet that I might juice by buying rounds. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me point out, too, that boxing bets require being updated based on late developments. This is how I see it today. I've put down a stake on Tyson Fury at a plus 154. Doesn't mean I think he's going to win the fight. Just means that at these odds, I believe he's the betting side of the play. Right? I reserve the right to update this bet and to change this bet, and I'll certainly leave videos here with updated thoughts depending on what happens. Right? You might recall before the first fight, Tyson Fury got cut on the eve of the fight. Right? There were reports before the first fight that I didn't take too seriously, and I should have, of Tyson Fury losing a lot of weight. Then when you saw him, he looked much smaller than he did in prior fights. Right, folks? He could not take Usyk's punch in the 10th round. Understand how that sequence goes down. He gets hurt. He's out on his feet. Usyk has to hit him again because the referee allowed the ropes to save Fury, right? Fury is hurt. He staggers over to a set of ropes. The ropes hold him up. Understand, look at the sequence. The referee could have stepped between the two guys, ruled it a knockdown, and started a count. No, the ropes hold Fury up. Usyk has to go over there and hit Fury again. The point is, Fury's defense is gone, right? His legs are gone. He's out on his feet. His defense is gone. Usyk's able to hit him with follow-up shots. After surprising him with the big shot, that leads to him being out on his feet, right? So Usyk is landing several shots in that ninth round. Fury has to tighten up his defense. He has to tighten up his punch resistance. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Thanks for stopping by.